Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 181. Yes, I am still on road trip, if you can believe it, but it is a long way up to Lofoten. But what a place here in Norway. It is definitely worth the trip all the way up here, if you should ever get the chance. But now I'm heading back to Denmark, but it's going to take a couple of days. But then I'll be back, back at the studio. Everything will be back to normal. But let's dive into the news of this news episode because we still got some great news this week as Tesla has become the car most people want to buy. And Tesla's energy business continues to rise. And GM reports pretty good earnings, but their EV business is still a joke. And Ford is now backing down from their promised EV targets. And one of Tesla's closest competitors shows off how difficult it is to keep up with Tesla. All of this and much, much more in today's episode. Let's dive right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. And we got one of Tesla's best competitors showing off how difficult it is to keep up with Tesla. A great example of Tesla's pricing power. We have got the price of the Polestar 3 in Australia, and I think they have just priced themselves out of the market. It's a nice EV. I have seen it in person, but the starting price is above 54,000 Australian dollars more than the Model Y. If we compare the performance models, the price is about 55,000 Australian dollars. The Polestar does have a little bit more range with 46 kilometers, but the Model Y has a whole second faster acceleration than the Polestar 3. You really have to hate Tesla or be a hardcore Polestar fan to make the choice to buy the Polestar for $50,000 more and then get less performance, less safety, less capable software and charging infrastructure. So I'm afraid the Polestar is making the same mistake as BYD has done with the BYD Han in Europe, priced it way too high. So even though that might be a nice EV, they have priced it out of the market. In the first half of 2023, BYD has only sold about 154 units of the Han in Europe, compared to Tesla's Model Y that is sitting around 100,000 units. But Polestar might not have much of a choice. As Gene Monster mentioned last week, Polestar should have about a negative margin on their EVs of 45%. So this really shows us how much pricing power Tesla has here. Tesla is setting the price for a very good electric SUV with great performance specs and software and everything. And everyone else can't match the price. Polestar is not even close. We're talking about 54,000 Australian dollars more and Polestar is still losing almost 50% on their EVs. They have no chance of competing with Tesla on price. And you will even get more with your Tesla than you do with the Polestar. The Polestar 3 is a nice EV and might have more luxurious interior, but that is pretty much the only advantage the Polestar 3 have over the Model Y. Yeah, I don't think we will see a huge sales of the Polestar 3 in Australia with those prices. Their numbers will probably look something like the BYD Han in Europe, if they don't change the price. But I don't think they even can. Not easy competing with the likes of Tesla. And we all love to surf the internet, right? But here is a reality check. It's not always safe. It's alarmingly easy to get hacked. As simple as pushing a button, really. Which is why I always prioritize my online security by using a VPN. Using a VPN means that no hacker or internet provider can sneak a peek or steal my data. Everything from my emails, pictures and banking details are encrypted. That allows me to focus on my work without having to worry about my online security. And speaking of online security, I am thrilled to announce today's sponsor, 
private internet access or peer a world leading vpn provider they are one of the biggest and most trusted vpn provider in the world what makes peer unique well their vpn is 100 percent open source and their code is public so that anyone can take a look under the hood and examine just how secure and private their service really is this level of transparency is rarely seen in other vpns this level of trust is probably why they they have gathered over 30 million downloads worldwide. Private Internet Access is a US-based VPN provider with one of the most extensive service base globally, almost 30,000 servers. Talk about impressive. And what does Peer do? Well, it hides your IP address and encrypts your internet connection, protecting your digital life. This is incredibly important considering how much of our life is online, on our computers and smart devices. The best part? Peer works on any device, from computers to smartphones with all major streaming service, which means unrestricted access to all your favorite content anywhere in the world, like on my road trip here up through Norway. And I have some great news. If you use my link down below, you will get an incredible 83% discount on private internet access. That is just over $2.03 a month for a top tier online security. Plus, you will also get four extra months completely for free. So don't wait, sign up for Peer today. It is totally risk free. They have 30 days money back guaranteed and 24 seven customer service is available available if you should ever need it. So click my link below to get the online privacy we all deserve. And a big thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. DM held their earnings call and made some records on their own, but they still can't keep up with Tesla on net income. General Motors' second quarter net income jumped 52%, so that was very nice, to $2.6 billion. Tesla's net income was $2.7 billion, even though GM have about $20 billion more in revenue. They don't really earn more on the bottom line. But GM had a very good quarter on their financials, but all of that is of course because of their rice business. So we should not expect that to last for much longer, as the US is also rapidly transitioning over to EVs. The thing GM is just not making in any meaningful volume. 99% of GM sales in Q2 was ice cars, and their EV sales was down. So I don't think the nice looking financials from GM will continue for much longer, as they are simply just not making the car of the future. They are talking a lot about it, but simply just not executing. And during GM's earnings call, Mary Barra said that they will introduce the next generation Chevy Bolt. We will execute it more quickly compared to an all new program with significant lower engineering expenses and capital investment by updating the vehicle with Ultimum and Ultify technology and by applying our winning with simplicity discipline. <laughs> Winning with simplicity? <laughs> you can't even make EVs on your new Ultimum platform in volume. And you want to make 30 different EV models. Please tell me what is simple about that. <laughs> but let's see when they can have this new bolt on the street in volume as timing, production side and other details about the next generation bolt will be announced later. But they will end the current bolt by the end of this year. So seems like they will have a gap between the old and the new since they are not ready to announce the new product just yet. But they need to speed things up as facade showed in this chart. They have to really press the accelerator to meet their goal of 1 million EV sold in the US by 2025. I wish them good luck because they will need it. And Tesla is still doing great in the US as GM and Ford is hardly something we can call competition. The numbers here from Roland is only estimates, as Tesla does not unfortunately report US only numbers. But in the US, Tesla should have sold 65,000 cars in June, third best month 
ever, up 22% versus last month. Best June ever, best quarter ever, up 9% quarter over quarter, and 42% year to date versus same period last year. Year to date is 64% of last year's total. So Tesla is up about 42% in the US this year, even though we have analysts screaming about the competition and believe GM and Ford is true competitors to Tesla. But uh, they are nowhere to be found close to Tesla. That just grew 42% so far this year in the US. Tesla is not slowing down and no one is catching up. Tesla is still the king in the US EV market and everyone else is still just talk. We can compare GM's EV sales in the US that sold 36,400 units in the first half of the year. Tesla sold 30,000 units more than that just in June. <laughs> Tesla sold about 10x what GM has done so far this year. And the story is the same with Ford, that also revealed pretty good financials in Q2, but all driven by their ICE business, of course, as their Model E continues to struggle to ramp up, as Ford backed down from their ambitious milestone for building electric vehicles in the future. Ford had said it would build an annual rate of 600,000 this year, but now they say that won't happen until next year. What a surprise! And Ford also delayed the goal of 2 billion EVs per year by the end of 2026, pushing that out indefinitely. So even though both Ford and GM has said that they would catch up to Tesla, we can see their EV business crumbling right in front of us. And they will not be able to deliver on their promises of 2 million EVs in 2024 and 2026. While Tesla continues to ramp up like crazy with 42% year to date in the US and are getting close to 2 million EVs this year. People that are talking about competition coming and believe Ford and GM will catch up are not really paying attention or very badly informed. There still is no competition to Tesla in the US. None whatsoever. And Tesla's energy business seems to continue to rise as Neon, who built the Hornsdale power plant in Australia, is now expanding their already biggest battery project in Queensland. France renewable energy developer Neon has announced a major increase in the size of its Western Dawn's battery project in Queensland, which is already the biggest battery co-located with a solar project in Australia. The battery part of what Neo calls the Western Dawn's green power hub was initially planned to 200 megawatt and 400 megawatt hours, but has now been expanded to 270 megawatt and 540 megawatt hours. It is being built with Tesla's Megapack 2XL battery technology, of course, and will sit next to the newly commissioned 400 megawatt Western Dawn solar farm. UGL will build the project. Neon has been the pioneer and dominant player in the Australian battery storage market and built the original Tesla Big Battery at Hornsdale as well as the Victorian Big Battery, which at 300 megawatt and 450 megawatt hour remains the biggest complete battery project in the country. We can pretty much report every week a new big battery project where Tesla will be providing both the batteries and the software, don't forget that, to control it all. With this rate, it will not take long for the energy side of Tesla's business to become a much bigger part of their financials, as their leather factory is also ramping up and the cost of battery packs for Tesla will also go down, as I also showed you last week how Tesla is widening the gap between the cost and the profits of the energy storage business. Very impressive and it won't be long before analysts can't say anymore, but Tesla is just a car company. as 90% of their profits come from car sales. Well, not for long. And let's get our weekly updates about the Tesla Giga factories. That means handing it over to Brian from My Tesla Weekend. Take it away, Brian. Hey Lars. Well, in Fremont, there's a excavation near the QA building, kind of over by the uh, by the casting area. Maybe they're adding uh, new castings in this area. In Shanghai, there is no footage to see, uh, no progress anyway. And what little we have seen is there's just a privacy fence that's been added in one area and some cars under wraps in it. 
made a whole video about that. In Berlin, uh, the stamping area has been closed off. There's a new pad in the north central part of the site, and it's already turned into a sprung structure. At the southwest, the entry has been torn up, and the bridge work continues. The bridge is starting to take shape. The road striping is done. There's a new access road that's been paved uh, to, across the south there, and uh, they put up guardrails. There's also a canopy over the superchargers going in, and uh, the rail, uh, the transit station, has a, a roof now. It's got most of its platform complete. The Big Warehouse on Wheels expansion is going nicely. They've got a lot more concrete over there, and you get a better idea of what it's going to look like. And in the northeast corner, there's the recycling center. Yes, I had said it might be a concrete batch plant. I was corrected. Thank you for that. It's even got a roof over part of it. In Texas, oh my gosh, do we have a lot to discuss. There's a big area that's been excavated for drainage work, and there's widening and grading of the South River Road. The first steel has been erected at the south end, and then over along the west side, the stainless steel entry arches are in progress. Up on the roof, there's some L-shaped vents you can see on the northwest over the 4680 battery part of the building. The Megapacks have gravel. The Megapack area has been graded a bit to the east. Uh, they've got uh, the Megapacks. They're in, all 68 of them. And the Megapacks have uh, steel towers that uh, will you be used to connect them to the rest of, well, everything, specifically the grid. There's been more grading uh, in the uh, southeast area, where we believe they're going to be adding a multi-level parking structure. Just to the east of the cathode building, they poured a new foundation and removed it, and now they're replacing it. And next to the uh, dye shop, they've removed the berm. The berm next separating the dye shop from the Martin Marietta plant, yeah, it's gone. Over at the switchyard, the drainage vault is more or less done. It's close to done. They excavated, they put in the walls, they've put in most of the ceiling by now. On the other side of the highway, uh, the Tesla Road, where it extends over to the Farm to Market Highway there, the road widening is underway, moving along, looking nice. Stormwater management has all been addressed. They've been putting in new groundwater pipes uh, for drainage. And uh, in the big uh, warehouse on wheels area we've seen developing over there, the concrete piles are mostly gone. And the massive grading in that far west area continues. It's got geotextile. It's getting real flat. And they've even begun relocating the small power lines. So that's pretty exciting. Still no progress in Mexico. So that's all we've got. Back to you, Lars. Thank you so much for that update, Brian. See you next month. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this news show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla shorts. Tesla came out as the car brand people are looking to buy the most across the world, topping the table as the most Google car for sales in 39 countries. It came first in the US in 25 states out of the 50, as well as Canada, France, Spain, Germany, Australia, UAE and Scandinavia. Nice. And last week's new show, I reported that Mitsubishi was leaving China as they couldn't keep up. And this week, Toyota apparently said Tuesday it demissioned around 1,000 contract factory workers in China as the world's biggest auto market rapidly transitioned to clean cars. Yes, we will see the downfall of the old legacy automakers in China first, as they are so far ahead in China and has been one of the biggest markets for most automakers. And Volvo says that they will not be using Tesla's full self-driving software in the future. As their CEO said, we've chosen that we want to be in full control of our ADAS, all the way up to full AD software. But let's see how this goes, because if Tesla is just on the cusp of solving it, they might want to change their mind, as Volvo has just again delayed the XC90. That was confirmed by CEO Jim Rowan, attributing it to the complexity of the LiDAR system software. Expected production moved from 2021 to potentially Q3 of 2024. So, not full self-driving, but just problem with their software for their ADAS system. 
I think Volvo might change their mind on this in the future to not be left behind. And speaking of delays, Mercedes-Benz delayed their BEV target. Mercedes-Benz CEO Kellen said, Sometime during this decade, the market will turn. Then we will see exponential growth in electric vehicle. But, um... Yeah, we, we are seeing exponential growth in electric vehicles, my friend. Maybe not by Mercedes or Volkswagen CVs, but the EV market is growing exponentially. But Mercedes don't want to make the price cuts to get more demand. As he said, we remain steadfast. I can only see this as a wrong move from Mercedes-Benz, but we will see how this all plays out. And Audi plans to use Chinese technology from SAIC to produce BEVs. Audi said it is working with partners on the future direction of its Chinese business. According to information from Hansblad, Audi plans to use Chinese technology to produce BEVs in the A3 and A4 series in Shanghai as early as next year. But as Alex pointed out in his tweet, most of the value creation in the vehicle no longer longer lies with Audi, but with SAIC. But I guess they had to get some help from the Chinese to stay relevant in the Chinese market. But it's not just Audi that is desperate to get some momentum in China. Volkswagen just bought a $700 million stake in Xpeng and will jointly develop two new EVs with the Chinese automakers. So mighty Volkswagen need help from little Xpeng to build EVs for the Chinese market. Let that one sink in for a moment. It could be a good move to try to get some momentum back in China, but Xping is not even sure to survive yet as they are still bleeding money and are the one that stole for self-driving software from Tesla. So let's see if this will benefit Volkswagen or be another bad investment as we have seen so many times before. And you can now get access to your Tesla account through Hertz Rental, as David wrote. Full Tesla app access is here. Using a QR code on the screen, I was able to instantly link to my Tesla app and now have full access, including phone as a key. I just did a software update to 2023.26.1 and this is the 22 rear-wheel drive LFP version. This changes the game in Tesla's rental. Very nice. And a Shell hydrogen station in the Netherlands evacuated after hydrogen leak discovered. Emergency service alerted when hissing sound was heard as a bus depot site in Groningen. But that's not all. One more station in California was not just hissing, but explosion was heard as a hydrogen bus caught fire just after filling up. Yes, this shit is dangerous, and the bus did cost $1.1 million. Hydrogen is stupid, dangerous and expensive. We already have thousands of electric buses in Europe and China. Why do they want to make these very expensive, inefficient and dangerous hydrogen buses? They make no sense and are not necessary, as they have already shown in the UK, as Professor David Sabon has shared with Full the Charge. It is only the fossil fuel industry that wants to keep hydrogen alive. But come on, just give up already. And the argument of a filling up and only takes five minutes. Well, if you live near a charging station, that is. Because according to Alan Finkel, filling it is a 63 minute experience because there are only one refueling station in Melbourne. There's only one in Victoria. There's only a handful in all of Australia, as he said, as one of the few owners of an hydrogen car in Australia who added it took him 30 minutes each way to drive to the refueling station. So not really filling up in 5 minutes. Hydrogen for transportation is just stupid any way you look at it. And the mainstream media is slowly waking up as CNN wrote a nice article about how Tesla want to turn the Berlin factory into Europe's biggest car plant. 
Yes, but uh, that is not news, CNN. <laughs> that has always been the plan. I made a whole video about this back in October 2021, how big of a chess move the Berlin factory was, because when fully built out and ramped up, it would be able to produce 2 million vehicles, and that would be more cars than any other OEMs producing and selling in Europe, as Volkswagen has only been making up to 1.8 million units in sales in Europe from their many factories and Tesla will be bigger with only one factory. But now, a couple of years later, it is starting to dawn on the mainstream media. <laughs> what? It's not only for 500,000 units? <laughs> Just as Volkswagen thought a couple of years back that Tesla would not become bigger than 1.6 million in production. So they didn't even get how big the Berlin factory would be become. So hard to blame the mainstream media for not getting it, but just shows how little people really get what Tesla is doing and not paying attention, but it is now starting to slowly catch up as more and more Tesla goals comes to fruition. And Twitter did officially become X last Sunday. The change to the everything app is slowly happening right now. First step changing from Twitter X. If you want to learn more about the implication and especially the banking opportunity, don't forget to check out my video I uploaded a couple of weeks back, link down below. But what Elon and the Team X has done since they take over is just insane. But Elon don't know anything about social platforms. He should be sticking to his cars. Well, Elon would be like, hold my beer. And Starlink is now available in Malaysia, marking the 60th countries around the world where Starlink can provide high-speed internet connectivity. Very impressive. And Ivan from the EV Stock Channel shared this nice chart, the Tesla's downward trend of their long-term debt. Yes, Tesla is earning more and more money and their long-term debt is going away, while legacy automakers are raising more and more debt and losing more and more money on their EV adventures. Don't take a genius to figure out how this will end. And a green loan over a half a billion pounds will see electric vehicle giant GridServe, I talked about them before on this channel, to push on with the huge expansion of its UK-wide EV charging network, with over 3,000 new high-power charging points set to be installed at more than 500 sites. But we also have some more EV charging being planned for the US market as a new EV public charging network joint venture will be created in North America by several major global automakers. BMW, GM, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes and Stellantis have joined forces to create an unprecedented new charging network joint venture. The station will be accessible to all BEVs from any automakers and will offer both CCS and Tesla's North American charging standards connector. That's very nice, but we have to remember it is almost the same group of automakers that are behind the Ionity in Europe, Volkswagen's diesel gauge charging network, and they do don't perform that great. Even Herbert Dees was out in 2021 after his summer road trip and said the Ionity network was not good enough. So let's hope they can get it working better in the US and are not just a way to get government subsidies. And if you think it's bad that Volkswagen haven't sold a lot of EVs as they wanted to, well, yes, but many of them has ended up at the used car market pretty fast and is not being sold very fast either. As Eon shared on X, used Volkswagen ID3s still seems to be glued to the dealer's lot. The prime example was 42 thousand euros on November the 6th 2022 is now almost nine months later without a kilometer added to the odometer now cost 34,000 euros. Yikes. And Porsche warned on Wednesday that supply chain problems were hampering BEV production and pointed the slower growth in Europe and China. How can they still think that the supply chain problem still works? We all know the constraint in supply chain has lightened up significantly. But every time legacy automakers see bad sales, they just blame it on supply issues. Nothing else is wrong. Sure, if you say so. 
and in a planning submission for a new supercharger site in the UK, Tesla puts the charging capacity of the new version 4 chargers at 350 kilowatt. Sounds good to me. Hopefully we will soon see the bump in charging speed for the Teslas, as we have been talking about for a couple of years now. And Lilix got a chance to say hello to Optimus this week. What a world he's growing up in. And before we end up with a bit of fun, I just want to say thanks to all my supporters. Can't do this without you guys. Thank you so much. And let's end off with a bit of fun. Even animal can get addicted to video games. That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help this video out a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.